Hello, David Moore, and I've got Greg Genovese here <laughs> with USG Realty Capital. And, and uh, as I said, starting off, I was blessed to be involved with an event he hosted in Tacoma about a OZ project. He's not somebody that just talks about this stuff. He does it. And we're just talking a little bit about how you got involved with all this stuff, your, your roots, and, and what led you to create USG and, and led you into the uh, whole OZ or QOZ process. Uh, certainly. And uh, that was nice. That w- it, was a, it was a great event and really happy that, yeah. that uh, you and your son were able to, to attend. Um, so how I got into it, uh, it was kind of interesting. My history really, like we, we talked about earlier, is real estate securities. Uh, I've been doing that a long time. And then uh, we're doing 1031 exchange uh, programs. Um, and we'll continue to do those to do those programs, but and when, you're coming out with some more product in the future in that space. We have our own 1031 yeah. exchange platform that uh, we're teeing up right now. Yeah, um, and, and we'll, that'll be in what format? It'll be in the DST. Uh, it'll be in the DST format, and so we'll do it as a securitized uh, format. I'm actually a securities licensed, which a lot of people in my industry aren't, but yes. I like to be securities licensed. You know, there it's just an extra layer of liability protection for the yeah. investor and knowing that I have to comport to all the securities rules. <laughs> I, I always do do tell people there's always another Bernie Madoff out there or like there's the guy what? with yeah, the, the, kid his with name, the kid. Yeah. Yeah. I mean so it's, it's an a, acronym. It's it's never uh, foolproof, but um you know, in our industry when you're talking about non traded uh, markets, whether it be ten thirty one or in the opportunity zone side, you know, mitigating your investors' risk is is paramount. When I got involved in the opportunity zone side, I went around the country and was luckily, you know, it was, it was nice that I was asked by a lot of different cities to, you know, give talks, Chicago, San Francisco, Seattle. And that um, was all attributable to your prior life. In oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah. It's, they they yeah. just wanted to hear what I had to yeah. say about it. And I would end every panel discussion the same way. I used to say, you know, mark my words, in six or seven years, you're going to hear a New York Times story about two guys in San Diego that, you know, ripped off a bunch of people from Palm Springs. And the reason I said that is whenever there's a tax initiative, and I think this is important, not just for Opportunity Zones, but 1031s, mm-hmm. whenever there's a tax initiative, Everybody in their uncle will come out with a program. And um, it, it, so vetting who you're doing business with is, is just paramount. So, and I'm sure you being you know, one of the top qualified intermediaries, actually not only in the state of Oregon, but in the country, I'm sure, you know, I know you've done a great job of vetting where this money is going to go to. And well, I, I just tell people what's good tax deferral if, if you lose the money. I mean, that's the reality of it, right? right? So I just want to see my people go into things where they're, they've they got a reason, they're reasonably assured of success going forward. Otherwise, you know, every dollar you spend more than you want on something costs you a buck, right? Yeah. If you don't spend it, maybe it's 30, 40 cents. But why put your developments always going to be, you know, one of those things. There's lots of unanswered questions and things that come up. And that's what I really enjoyed, you know, listening to with that meeting. I mean, we spent a day just going over a single project that you've got going on. And we heard from, obviously, you and your internal team to the people with the the engineering, the, yeah, the market design studies, group, the yeah. construction side, the money people, the do just I mean, you had team after team that came in and said, Yeah, this is what we're doing, why we're doing it, and this is what we thought. And it was I mean, it really Thank you. sort of clarified and, and, and really showed how serious you take it. Yeah. And I think, and thank you for saying that. That was, that was kind of you and and kind of where I was going with it when, uh, you know, again, tax advantage, it's, you know, anything you do out there, you know, our, our investing public has to be very circumspect right now. And when things are good and everything's, you know, like I said, we were in a 10 to 12 year run there. I think we're going into a period of time where we have to all be very circumspect in a good way. You know, crossing our T's, dotting our I's, doing our due diligence, not jumping at the, the you know, the next uh, bright, shiny thing. Mm-hmm. This is really where people doing good analysis uh, counts. So so back to what you were saying as far as why I got involved in Opportunity Zones. I've been in the 1031 side forever. As I said, we've got that platform. But what was really intriguing to me about the Opportunity Zone initiative was, number one, it was something that was completely bipartisan. And, and you know, you hear people yeah, say... We were talking about that yeah. earlier. I, I didn't realize all the history, but... Yeah. yeah, it really is. And people will say bipartisan a lot and not really mean it. Mm-hmm. This really is. It was something that, just to be as succinct as possible, the Obama administration actually wanted to bring the Opportunity Zone initiative out. 
in 2012. Just didn't get it done. And, and it was uh, the 2012 Tax Act really brought out what's called uh, Reg A offerings or, you know, you started seeing crowdfunding. And then, but it was a great idea. It was, it really was fostered by how do you take capital gains? And, and here's the other thing. There's six trillion, not billion, but six trillion dollars of, of capital gains that's sitting in the stock market. Now we've had the stock market go down. So I don't know that number. Maybe it's four and a half trillion now, yeah. but it's still, it's still. <laughs> yeah, the six trillion was how? That was, was, in, that was, in, 20, was, that was yeah, in 2018. Yeah. But yeah. so you have this six trillion of gains that's just sitting there. And of course, we don't want another 2008, right? Mm-hmm. And we don't want to find ourselves at 45 or 50% of your 401k all of a sudden down you know, down because we go into a major recession. So I look at it from two perspectives. One is the administration was trying to figure out a way, how do we deflate those gains? And how do we get people to want to sell that Amazon stock or that Apple stock, right? And then, well, one way to entice it is to say, if you know, if you sell that stock and you then invest in this particular type of program, you know what, we'll defer your capital gains tax for a while. We'll even give you a discount on it. Yeah. So it's a way, it's almost a, in a way for the government to deflate, to, uh, to now rebalance people's portfolios. But it's great for the investor because it's a, it gives them that out to take those gains, to invest it into a fund or into a program, defer their capital gains yeah. tax, and then make the whole thing tax-free at the end. So it, it was a great mechanism. The Trump administration brought it out in the 2017 Tax Act. And the only difference between the Obama version and the Trump version was the Obama version wanted the federal government to pick the uh, zones. The federal eight, government. The federal government. There's 8,700 yeah. of these zones. And they're basically, I didn't mention to your audience, but really these are mostly low-income areas around the country. Mm-hmm. With They can be abutted up against a, a middle-income area. So it's not just totally low-income yes. areas. Um, so there's about 8,700 of these areas. The Obama administration wanted it to be the federal government to pick the zones. Trump's administration, all they wanted to do was give it to the states. So I'm sitting in the state of Oregon right now. So your governor here in Oregon got yeah. to pick those particular zones in Seattle. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Washington, California, and so forth. So it's really something that was that was bipartisan. Um, and it's gotten a lot of support from both the Republican side and the Democratic side. The other great thing about it is that, not to sound too Pollyannish about it, yeah. to be honest with you, but it's really a way of giving back to the community. Now, just so your your audience doesn't think these are like dilapidated you know, areas, uh, it, it, there are some areas that are like that, but the majority of the opportunity zones that were designated throughout the country really are areas that... They're doing good. They're growing on their own steam. But if they were to receive some uh, infusion of yeah. capital, it's just going to kind of move it ahead. I, I, I'll i tell you, I kind of liken it to like Brooklyn was yeah. uh, 15 or 20 years ago in New York. You know, now you can't touch anything in Brooklyn. Yes. Or where I'm from the San Francisco Bay Area, Alameda in Oakland, California, those kinds of areas. So it's not that investor or investors would be putting their money into these you know, terrible areas. They're just areas that need a little bit of uh, infusion. So the really neat thing is groups like us who put these funds together, we're supplying the equity to build, most of the time it's multifamily housing, multifamily projects with good returns of 10% or more. Wow. And the investors actually get that 100% um, Tax free on on the growth on the project, and I always like to say, you know, yeah. there's a famous quote by uh, Benjamin Franklin. You know, he said, you know, do well by doing good. So on top of the fact that you have a tax advantage, a great tax advantage program, mm-hmm. you're also able to invest, and you're actually helping communities. And what's really neat about that is, the you in most cases you're getting the city councils on board, the local economic development alliances are on board. Um, and on top of that, you're usually getting some extra benefits from tax credits. So not only are you getting opportunity zone tax benefits, in most cases, you're getting multifamily tax credits as well. So you're taking advantage of several different buckets to get the funds to get the project. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 So before we started on uh, today, we were talking about, and Greg was sort of asking me, so, well, you know, I understand 
you know, the OZ stuff, but, you know, what do you want from me? I mean, we're really as far, and well, I'm joking about that, but as far as it's not really a 1031 thing, we'll talk about how it works with 1031, but it really has nothing to do with 1031 other than the 180-day timeline. Yes. But, you know, Greg asked me point blank, uh, you know, well, so what's the interest there? And my interest is for you guys to understand what options are out there. And 1031 is not always going to be the right thing for you. And and I think this is a situation where it's just another tool in your, your toolbox to get out of what you don't want into what you do want. And it's a way to maybe salvage some tax benefits from an exchange that maybe isn't completed because today we're having more that are not being completed. And, and you know, we, we talked a little bit about financing. Financing is one of those com- com- components that comes into play that can be difficult for people in today's world. So uh, we'll be right back with uh, the next uh, set of questions, but don't go away. David Moore and uh, Greg Genovese. Genovese. (laughs) 